everyone. Welcome to the Paul Chase Tell You at Insider. I'm Jeff Brightwell and joined by head coach Darren Schoenrock. And coach, we're going to talk about baseball in a moment. But unfortunately, uh, things we don't like to talk about, but he definitely deserves to be uh, talked about here on the, the show. Uh, you, you guys, at least the majority of the guys, you, I'm sure you heard about it overnight, but wake up Sunday morning, get to the ballpark, and I'm sure it's an early team meeting before the game to hear the unfortunate news that David Weaver, who had been the manager uh, for four or five seasons, and it just just wrapped up last year, uh, was in an unfortunate automobile accident. And, you know, it, it's a terrible life lesson to have to learn for the guys in the locker room that, you know, you play your, your last game uh, like it could potentially be your last because, unfortunately, uh, we lost David Weaver over the weekend. You know, just like you said, Jeff, very unfortunate of that, of that being the topic of a, of a called team meeting early Sunday morning. You know, we had uh, – we had had our, our pregame meal and our scouting report and we were getting ready to stretch for batting practice and we get the news and, uh, uh, you know, David, we call him Weavis. I mean, Weaves was more than just a manager. He did a lot of electronic stuff, a lot of computer thing. He just a multi-talented guy, uh, was with us five years, uh, every day, just an everyday grind guy, you know, was sent to us, uh, by a former player of mine, Duke Williams. He worked mm -hmm. for Duke and Duke, rec you know, knows what, what transpires in our program and Duke recommended him very highly and, and uh, filled in the same capacity for Duke at ECS. So just tragic and, and as it's still affecting our guys, but, but so it was a pretty dismal start to the day and, uh, and that carried into the game and it was just, you know, the, the team elected to, to play. I gave them a choice. Uh, Laird Veach gave us a choice of forfeiting mm -hmm. or playing and uh, the, the team captains uh, came to my office and they said, we want to play, we want to play for David. And luckily we grabbed a win for him. Well, and, and, and Weaver was a, uh, you know, there's been lots of managers. I mean, it's your 17th year. So lots of managers come through and they're all, they're all valuable. They all do their job, but I mean, I won't name them, but I can think right off the top of my head, three or four that really make that connection with the team. They're not just the guys that come in and do the laundry and make sure the equipment's out. There's been three or four of them over the tenure that, that really connect with the team, and, and he was one of them. He was definitely one of them, and just connected on a just just individual basis. Everybody had an individual relationship with David, and and uh, and and you know had diff for different things. Some of them were you know he helped them with a lot of stuff with around computers, and mm -hmm. some of them was just uh, hanging out off the field and just just fun stuff. But he he uh, he always got his work done. Uh, he was very very positive in doing it. And uh, and was just a grinder, you know. He also served as a as a Redbirds clubhouse guy in the summer, it was kind of a summer gig for the visiting team that played the Redbirds. And then I know he did some work in the Redbirds clubhouse. So uh, just love being around baseball. Love love serving the guys. And uh, just a tough day. We're gonna we're gonna do something for him in this building at some point somewhere. So we're gonna keep keep the legacy of of Weavis going and and uh, and celebrate his life. All right, Coach, over the weekend, uh, you did get a 2-2 split with Houston, split the doubleheader on Friday, a loss Saturday. And, and as you mentioned, it was a tough day Sunday, but what a, what a crazy rally, eight runs there in, in the eighth inning. And they elected, and you never know, the, the guy starting Sunday, uh, he had not had a lot of outings, I believe just his third start, not a lot of innings, so it could have been a pitch count thing, but uh, absolutely dominating, as you had talked about on the mound, just couldn't figure him out. They go to the bullpen. They've been a little shaky. And, you know, unfortunately, we've seen it on both sides. They, they just could not find the strike zone out of the bullpen. And credit to your guys. It's not you – know, a lot of people say, well, they walked six guys in the inning. But you guys had to take the walks. You had to be disciplined. You didn't try to get too big in that moment. Yeah, and that's been, that's been hard for us at times, Jeff, is, is the, the youth in the lineup is, is knowing – we call them poised at bats, of, of having enough poise at bats. Sometimes they – feel like every at bat's got to be let's get three big swings off and try to run it in the gap somewhere sometimes the best at bat you can give us is just laying off of tough pitches laying off of borderline pitches and putting himself in a good count and then winning some three two pitches and uh, we did get some hits in that thing that 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 opened it up but but it started with a harmless leadoff walk to hunter goodman who you know it's not a guy that we really want to walk but in that case uh he put in that bat together drew a walk and good things you usually happen when you can get a leadoff man on, and that that was the case in that inning. Don't know if we'll get a chance to talk next week because you know we'll all be down in Clearwater at the tournament. So let's let's talk real quick 
uh, before we talk some more about this past weekend, as you mentioned, Hunter Goodman, you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a unfortunate circumstance, you know, he'll go in the draft, which is great. He put up some huge numbers, but you know, Greg and I were talking about this in the broadcast, you know, it's freshman year. You never know. He's a freshman. You're not sure what he's going to do. You have expectations nearly sets the RBI record, not the freshman record, but the RBI record in the American yeah. last year, it gets banged to 17 games. This year, limited attendance, but just because of COVID. Uh, so, so he, due to circumstance beyond his control, number one, career numbers, not going to be in the record books. He'll have a lot of single season records. And unfortunately for the Tiger faithful out there, a lot of people, they know the name, but uh, unfortunately, a lot of people just didn't get to see him play because of the 17 game limited schedule than the, you know, the COVID uh, attendance list this year, but you know, the scouts know he'll still go high. We all know how great he was. And I think the fans still know. Uh, just sure. unfortunate, a lot of people didn't get to see him in person. Yeah, he's a pretty special guy to watch hit. And, you know, sometimes he'll he'll go into games and try to do where he feels like he's got to carry us. And that's, that's – it's very easy to say, hey, Hunter, you don't have to do that. But he is uh, – he wants to win. He, uh, above all else, he wants to – he wants the Tigers to get a win, and sometimes he feels like with the, some other things going around him in the lineup that it's always on his shoulders. And so he's every at bat has a lot of he carries a lot of weight to the plate. And uh, but yeah, what a what a special talent he is. And you're right, those that didn't get a chance to see him, hopefully you'll get a chance to see him on TV someday because uh, uh, I think you will. But but you know he's putting he's quietly putting together another very good year with some things fluctuating in front of him in the lineup and behind him in the lineup. You know. And uh, Alec Trello's had some a couple of good weekends and a couple of you know he's had he's had a uh, he's got the best chance to protect Hunter of anybody we have right now because he does have the respect of the coaches that he can put it in a parking lot on any one swing and he has done that some so uh, but it's going to be interesting to see you know Hunter's <laughs> Hunter's uh, baptism into American Athletic Conference play came at Wichita his yeah. freshman year and struck out five times his first. His first AAC game struck out five times, and he says, and he came in. He goes, "I got some things to learn about this level in this league," and that's that was the. And from then on, you know, he, he just kind of took off. So uh, I'm sure we'll talk about that when we get up there some. But <laughs> what a fun guy to watch hit. Other than the RBIs his freshman year, the one thing I remember is it took him well over half the season to get his first career. <laughs> first He's come ball. a long way. He's come a long way. And uh, and uh, one of the things that we promised him, we have to kind of like dangle a carrot, go, hey, we'll give you a lot of green lights to steal if you walk. Right. And he likes stealing bases. He loves running the bases. So, and you look at, he's he's our leading stolen base guy too. So I, I mentioned it on there on the broadcast over the weekend too. The, the only guy happy to see the shortened season last year uh, was probably, and, and we love him because he's now in the, in the Hall of Fame and, and you've retired his jersey as, Adam Amar, he's Amar. the one guy that's not going to say records. He wants his records to stay in that record book. He does. He, Adam, won't, he won't tell you any otherwise, but he's selfish like most of the players. But uh, he, he kept calling, going, who's this Goodman guy? I said, I kept saying, Adam, Adam, relax. He's going to shatter all your records. <laughs> no, he's not. No, he's not. So, uh, but uh, but no, they, they, everybody around Tiger Nation, all of our former players are out there following us, uh, are rooting for for Hunter to do well. And they, they we've had a lot of questions about him, but – uh, it's been a strange three years, but but it's been a, a very fun career to watch unfold. Well, let's talk about another guy real quick. We've mentioned his name the last few weeks. He's on the honor roll, Ian B.B. Loney. And I think, you know, any kind of push you get here late in the season, obviously Hunter, without a doubt, is the best player on the team. We know how he's going to get drafted. But Ian B.B. Loney, I, I've not looked at the breakdown from about halfway or maybe game 20 or 25, but the back half of the season – uh, he's gone from a 150 platoon playing left fielder to your everyday left fielder who's down the 260s. He's up over 100 points. So that, to me, that tells me he's probably hitting over the last five or six weeks, probably well over 350 to 400 in that range. Has become an outstanding defensive left fielder. I mean, you not to look too far ahead, you got to think next year going into the season, coaches are probably going to recognize him. He, he may be your preseason Hall Conference player. He, he, he should be. Uh, he's really, really grown. And, you know, we, 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 we challenged him. He was an infielder in junior college, played some outfield. <clears throat> um, we saw the need to get him in the outfield. Mm -hmm. And I challenged him going, hey, Bibbs, it's, you got to learn. You got to learn left field. And, and at first he wasn't a real good defender. We would put in defensive replacements for him. 
And he didn't like that. And I said, that's good. Now let's fix that. So he worked like crazy to become a better defender. It's a daily process. Uh, he gives us some of the most mature at bats on the team. You know, we do a thing called quality at bats and it, it doesn't involve always getting a hit. It just involves, can you extend the life of the at bat? Do you barrel a ball up? Do you execute a situation? Do you, and, and he is by far our, uh, he and Hunter are leaders in quality at bats on the year. So uh, he's to turn into a really nice college player. He's got, I guess his best tool, he's gifted. He's, he's got good bat speed, Jeff, and he's got some, for a wiry guy that's 168 to 170 pounds, he's got some core strength. And uh, when he, and, you know, when he gets one, he can get it. You saw the home run he hit got out of there really quick the other night. Uh, we have to guard against him becoming and wanting to become that type of guy. So we just keep preaching quabs to him. But he has fun playing. He's ultra competitive, and he never gives an at bat away. It doesn't matter what the score is. He he is always locked in and been a fun guy to coach. He really has been a fun guy to coach and. And, uh, you know, when we were at Arlington High School, it was kind of one of those guys that kind of went unnoticed in high school, went to junior college, and we, so we heard some things. And I said, oh, yeah, I remember the Bibbs kid from, from Arlington. And then next thing you know, the need arose, and we went and grabbed him from there. And, it, and he redshirted his first year because he wasn't ready. So right. uh, he's going to end up being a good story in Tiger Baseball Blue. So you got to Wichita State this weekend to wrap up the regular season. That uh, This is the first year since they've been in the league. They've really been able to play at the, the – at least upper level of the league. They, they struggled a little bit early coming in. I believe they're the third place right now battling for the three seed. The two seeds probably a little bit out of the, their reach. It looks like ECU and Tulane are going to grab those two spots, but they're fighting maybe for a, a three seed at the tournament. And just for the guys going up there, they're, they're probably too young unless they're just diehard students of the game. Maybe to remember – Gene Stevenson and just how dominant that program was as recently as maybe 12 to 15 years ago, probably their last college world series appearance. They've got several, they've got a national title. And that was one of the first, you know, programs that weren't from that, that big feet P5 program, them in Fresno state that showed that, Hey, you don't have to have a, a big football program around to be a national contender in baseball. Well, and you, you just look at the facilities they built and, you know, even since we were there, yeah. Uh, two years ago, they've renovated and moved into their own indoor and we're, we're in a different dugout and, and uh, just an unbelievable amount of tradition in the 80s. You know, when I was playing, they were rattling off, you know, 40, 40 win seasons left and right like nothing. And a uh, uh, lot, a lot of big leaguers came out of Wichita State and, uh, you know, and they've got a major league manager back now in the dugout managed nine or 10 years in the major leagues. Uh, so they're running a pro, just a kind of a pro style, but they have, uh, they've played very well at home. They're, they're hard to handle there. I think they put down new turf. This is their yeah. second field turf and, and I'm anxious to see it. Um, uh, the other one, the last time we were there was, was a little bit worn down, but they, they put everything back down, but, uh, solid team, solid on the mound. Uh, they've got some hitters that can do some damage. It'll be a, you know, always a challenging series on the road and, and you kind of got to guard against looking ahead to clear water. Let's just take it a day at a time. We're going to scale down some of the workload on our starting pitching just to kind of get them ready. We're going to throw multiple, multiple guys this weekend uh, to get some guys ready for, especially for Tuesday. It's a hard turnaround for somebody. So uh, we think that'll be Carson's to net to get that Tuesday start. So we'll, we'll go lighter on him and then just dump out the pen and get a lot of guys feet on the mound, hopefully at the right moments. Uh, let's talk real quick about Clearwater because I don't know if we'll get a chance to talk before uh, the, the tournament next week. Uh, we know it's going to be Tulane or ECU you start out with, but three through six is where the big race is this weekend that the coaches will be watching around the right. league. But it's always funny, you know, the, these tournaments, you never know. Uh, teams that get hot, unfortunately for you, got to split, maybe get some momentum, see what you do at Wichita. And you look around the league, the, there's two pretty complete teams. I would say Tulane and ECU, the records show it. We haven't seen Wichita State. You look at a USF, they're kind of pitching heavy. They have that starting pitching that could carry them through. Cincinnati's offense just always gives you trouble. And we could see them, you know, get through like they did last time in 2019. In fact, they're the defending conference champs going down they in are. the water. They are. So, it, you know, the way the tournament's set up for the American, if you get a win, you get a day off. So, you know, it's, 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 well, let's face it, ECU and Tulane are going to be the favorites, but you don't know what's going to happen down there. The Tigers have found their way on Saturday uh, plenty of times at the semifinals in Clearwater. 
we have, you know, we, and we've started anywhere in this tournament from the three seed to the eight seed. Yeah. Uh, and we've always found a way to play well. Uh, you, you treat them as every other game. You know, I think you, the, the key is keeping your team focused on, on the part of the day that involves that game. Let them have some breathing time. Let them have some fun. You can't put them in prison and lock them up. And, and uh, uh, so, I mean, we found a right niche to a way to handle it down there. The heat is something that's very different. It's very real. Uh, it, it's unlike anything we experience here, but, but there is the, the one difference this year, there are two dominant teams at the top and one, unfortunately we'll have to go through one of those two, depending on how we, how this weekend goes. But, um, but anything can happen. Carson's throwing very well right now. He's been, he's rattled off three very good starts in a row. Uh, he's different now than he was when he faced East Carolina and Tulane. They haven't seen the Carson's tonight that we have going right now. So that's, that's uh, favorable for us. Uh, but and then hopefully all this all the mileage that these young guys have gotten these these four or five freshmen that are playing, uh, hopefully they free it up and 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 just put all this experience to use in in a week long setting. All right, coach. As always, we appreciate it. We'll see you. Uh, I'll see you down in Clearwater next week. Outstanding. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you so much. Head coach Darren Schoenrock. I'm Jeff Wright. Well, with the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider on the Memphis Tiger Network. 